back to we are hosting uh, Trinity managing partner uh, Linus Sobolauskas. Everybody, a nice round of applause for Linus. Yeah. So uh, now getting to the to the discussion and uh, kicking kicking off uh, the discussion. Uh, from the ecosystem, from my friends in, in different startups, I hear uh, really many good words about you. So what uh, now um, I want to ask you, so how did you come to become a lawyer? Uh, what was your path? What were you know maybe the influences that, that you had uh, so before the studies? Mm -hmm. Uh, what were the main points and, and then we'll go on. Well, first of all, good evening. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here and to see so many uh, familiar faces and um, wonderful faces here. Um, uh, thanks for uh, moderating this. Um, it will be a, a nice change. Um, uh, going back to, to the question, um, well, actually, I, I didn't uh, think when, uh, th that I will be a lawyer. Uh, when um, when I was young, I was uh, m well. I, I come from a simple family. My uh, mother was uh, a teacher of uh, Lithuanian language, and, and so initially I thought I would study maybe linguistics, uh, Lithuanian. Uh, ethnology was interesting for me as well. Uh, later on, uh, maybe biology and nature and um, geography, ge geology, um, and um, and uh, later on. I, I focused on on well biology me um, and chemistry, so uh, so I could um, study medicine. And uh, and th the reason uh, why medicine, I think, um, when you when you're when you're young, uh, when you're 15, 16 years old, you're um, I would say a bit naive. Uh, you're a bit. Um, um, idealistic, and and, and uh, you you think. Um, so my thought was uh, how uh, I mean, what, what what is the purpose of life? What what I could um, do in 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 Typical life? Typical teenager. Huh? Typical teenager, <laughs> maybe. Uh, and so and so my my idea was uh, I I would like I mean the, the the purpose of life is if you can help people somehow. And and so if you're sitting I know ministry or or um, if you're I know. Uh, teacher of uh, Lithuanian language, and afterwards you would help people. That that would be sort of a, a dream. And then I thought, if I would, um, if I would, if I could do, if I could help people also during the work, that would be even better, and it would be an awesome, purposeful life. And so, how could you do that? Maybe medicine would be things. Um, in in my family, there was no lawyers, and um, and as a sort of a second choice, maybe law and. Uh, and if law, um, and then when, when I disclosed it uh, to, to some people I, I, I respected, I know teachers, or everybody said, oh my god, lawyers, so do you want to defend criminals? And, and, and these are crooks, and then you will be lying the whole day. And then and I was, oh my god, no, I don't want to be a lawyer. No, lawyers are bad. And, and, uh, and of course, nobody nobody knew that I mean that there are I know corporate lawyers or, or lawyers who do I know not not to speak of venture capital lawyers or, or anything like that. I mean, law and attorney uh, in back then and in my circle was uh, the, the the lawyer who who does criminal law and that, that was it. So. Anyway, uh, I was uh, preparing myself for medicine, uh, stud medicine studies, um, biology, chemistry, tutors, and then I, at that time, we had a choice to um, to, to select two um, uh, two sort of studies uh, or, or programs, and I, I chose uh, medicine first, and then and then law as a second, uh, and then I had well, you had to. Um, um, take um, entry exams, and uh, after exams for, for 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 law, which I was like reading a book the, the day before, um, and uh, and then medicine, two years of studies. I uh, also I, I took the exams, and when the results got out, the results got out, I saw that um, medicine is. Um, 
um, I, I well entered the, the medicine, but it's um, well not for free. I mean, you, you have to pay, and then for law, it was for free, and that uh, that uh, my fate was sealed there. <laughs> so, um, so really, very dedicated lawyer, dreamt from the little when I was little, and uh, always wanted to be a lawyer and. Yeah, so that's that's my story. But I actually I, I never regret it because I had uh, my classmate who, um, who also out of friendship uh, went to me for um, exams to the medicine uh, because he wanted to study economy, <laughs> and he um, he actually didn't pass the economy exam and uh, and and uh, but passed the medicine exam and now he's a, a very good um, surgeon. Um, but uh, I, when, when, whenever we meet, like every 10 years, you meet in the school, and then and, and then you and then I understand how, how lucky I was. Sorry, Andres, if you're seeing that, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. So just um, by a wink of a chance, uh, you you became lawyer. Uh, but uh, there's another thing uh, that uh, that uh, that I know even from from your school. Uh, you were attending the. Ajo Lucas uh, Boys Choir, and uh, I see. No, this uh, it might sound funny, but uh, I know too many overachievers who are uh, who have the same background. So, uh, what was your experience, and what this uh, Ajo Lucas Choir? What did it give you? Mm -hmm. Well, it, it was, uh, to be honest, it was uh, the best time of my life, I think. Um, we had, and, and the reason why is uh, because this is, um, it's like a boarding school or going to the boarding school where, where you spend a lot of time um, in, in the surroundings with um, like-minded people. I think everyone who gets into contact with music um, is is blessed and, and and appreciates it and that that stays with you for life uh, so even uh, um, so so this is this is important and uh, secondly the time when I was uh, in Azure Lucas uh, it, it it was the time when when um, the wall um, the the iron wall uh, fell and uh, we started uh, we started traveling a lot and um, our, my my first trip to Western world which was back then because of a uh, Soviet propaganda a, a rotten world where where you wouldn't go uh, we went to eighty eight so that was uh, two two years before independence declaration. And that was West Germany, not some GDR. Or, um, and of course we had to go through, uh, well, we had KGB agent who, who did uh, all the um, explanatory work, work, what you have to say, what, you have to, what you're allowed to do, what not. We had uh, a chief editor from Komuni Matias Saget Vidasvainauskas who was traveling with us as well, <laughs> pretending to be a journalist, and uh, <laughs> and so it, it was a fun fun time. That was '88, um, and then like every every year we we spent two three months a year uh, traveling and living in different uh, like changing. 10, 20 families, we would live normally in, in families and for two days and you would change another family and you were forced to speak, you were, you were forced to uh, communicate with people and, 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 and it opened, opened your mind and it, instead of this, I mean, I think it, it gave uh, this global perspective to me at a very early age, it, 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 it forced me to learn and appreciate foreign languages as well. Um, and and so and and I think well in, in short it, it gave it it, it gave a, a lot Andrew uh, Lucas I think and then uh, afterwards I mean with with the music um, after when when uh, finishing already when I was studying we had a, a boys group back then take that was very popular so we wanted to make a, a take that um, a local take that group uh, uh, for a short time we were. Quite successful, and we ended the, the um, our, our I ended my musical career with uh, uh, singing back up at uh, Eurovision with Scamp. So, so that was uh, the oh, highest the point, of, the peak of my career, and that's when I 
closed it because I was already a lawyer for German embassy, so we had to. That's why, if you if you if you see 2001, the the, the Eurovision contest, the, the three guys jumping, funny looking guys with big wigs. That's me because big wigs is to cover that I'm a lawyer, so nobody would recognize me, and that was my request. So, okay, so you're you're very smoothly uh, transitioning into the early days of your career. So, what was it? Uh, you finished the the university, you got the master's degree, and then? Well, again, I was, I don't know, coincidence or luck, luck I don't know, but I already when, when working in, uh, in, when studying at the university, I, I started work, working already. I, I did um, uh, some, I tried three months uh, a ministerial work. I, I was a lawyer for uh, um, Department of Statistics. And I, I could last only three months there because I, the, the problem there or in, this, in those institutions, you don't do anything and you just pretend being a lawyer and working and for three for three months I didn't do anything there I, and I was so embarrassed to take my salary every month um, that I was just, um, well I didn't want to do that and, and I said I, I, I'm quitting, I, I, it's not for me and, and I went into, into private, private practice. I was uh, fluent in German language and, uh, and there was only one German law firm in Lithuania at that time and, and so in 1998 I joined the firm and um, we were two lawyers and a secretary in that firm. I was the second lawyer. And then when this uh, German law firm um, decided to withdraw in 2000 um, from Lithuania because back then Germany was uh, uh, the economist called uh, Germany a, a sick man of Europe. There was on the cover uh, a horrible picture of um, uh, picturing well Germany and and so um, and so the German was in, Germany was in crisis and now German firm decided to withdraw and uh, I know we took over the firm and suddenly I was uh, I was a partner in the firm um, just barely finished um, having finished um, the, the the studies and I went into um, into the bar, um, well, bar let also Ducatura, not that bar, yeah, but, um, sure. the other bar, <laughs> and um, and and well, stood the exams and, and, and became full full time full time in lawyer. And since then, it, it, this is my um, startup. Uh, my still a startup, huh? <laughs> it, well, uh, I don't think you can call a startup after. Uh, some 17 years, um, but uh, but yes, it, it's still uh, very dear, and it is a major part of my my life, and and I'm very happy that we've assembled a, a wonderful team, and um, and and I think that that comes back to the to the roots of Azure Lucas because every employee we have is has a very good taste of um, uh, music, so if you if you like Despacito, you can't go to our firm. You, you know. <laughs> Or um, you have to you um, you have to have a good sense of humor. Everyone is positive because na naturally lawyers are very grumpy. They see a lot of bad things in life. They they turn negative. They are. They're horrible people, actually, and, <laughs> and and so except for those who work at Trinity. Yes, well, we try to keep the spirit <laughs> okay, and then be okay. happy and, and balancing and so, the law. Well, yes, yes, right. and so and so I'm very happy. We have a wonderful team. I, I see uh, some people here present. That's um, that's good. So I'm very proud of of, of them and um, very happy that they are they are. Um, with Trinity and, and we do good work. Okay, so you've taken over this uh, ex-German law firm mm -hmm. and you have the Trinity of today, uh, mm -hmm. which is, uh, I would say, one of the leading uh, uh, startup law firms here in Lithuania. Uh, how did you choose the field? Uh, what was your path or was it by chance as, as always? <laughs> it's been uh, yes. Well, uh, <laughs> startups and venture capital. Um, it's uh, th there was no such um, topic or, or area uh, when I started. Um, so what I did uh, at the very beginning was corporate law and 
mergers and acquisitions. Um, so we, we were helping companies buy other companies or, or deal with, I know, capital increase or reorganizations and, and this thing. And this is very exciting and, 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 and really interesting work. Uh, that's the cl as close as you could get to some international work because you get investors or buyers from um, from around the world and, and you get to work with uh, well-educated, interesting people, successful people from London, New York, because usually the investors hire some investment bankers, some international law firm. So this is as, as, as international as it can be here in our uh, small um, village uh, slash city. And, and, and so this, is, this was exciting, but there was no, no venture capital. Um, Although 1998, 1999, 2000, there was already a big boom in, in, in United States, first of all, and I was dot-com bubble, so-called, um, um, and I, I was really interested what's what's there, um, and I was trying to get hand on every book that I could get, and there was almost no books on that. There were like three books in total published back then. And all three, I, I have them in my library. I read them through and uh, I liked, and I, I was really interested in this alchemy that, that happens there, where um, a, a startup wins, um, a, an investor wins, and then the general economy wins, and, that, and that's a, a, a fantastic thing. And, and, and so this alchemy out of nothing, there's a big company and everybody wins. So I, I was really interested how, how, how to make that. And, and so I, I read all the books, but you, I mean, you can read as many books as, as you want, but um, if you don't have a chance to apply this in practice, then it, it doesn't really help you. And, and so I think for, for eight, ten years, I, the only thing I could do was, was actually read and, or study further. And I, so I went to, to Harvard Business School for the Venture Capital Program, the Oxford Private Equity Program. And, uh, and, and so to get more theory. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then in 2008, um, finally, uh, Lithuania got got to the well Jeremy program and launched the Jeremy program and launched the first uh, first uh, venture capital funds in Lithuania mm -hmm. and those funds they, they were novices themselves and and didn't know what how, how to do that what to do with the funds that they got like, I know 20 million euros you have to spend on, on startups what to do um, what is a startup what is a startup who can help me who understands that and and so and so we um, we got um, we got requests from uh, well from venture capital funds, but also from startups. And and one of the I I, I have to make a disclosure. One of the first uh, entrepreneurs and startups we worked or I worked on was was Nicholas and his uh, his long uh, startup. Ago. Long ago. Yes. Um, anyway, we we helped him uh, to negotiate with uh, uh, with a f one of the first funds, venture capital funds, uh, on investment into his. Um, into his uh, company um, back then, and, and that, that's how it started. So, um, Mikos recommended to Domantas Dvilinskas from TransferGo, Domantas recommended to like everybody, and now we worked on everyone who's, who's just moved <laughs> to US or UK or anyway. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's how I went to. Uh, All right, so that's, uh, that's for me, it was a really interesting story. Hope for the audience as well. But uh, now let's move on. To the business part. I need a drink. Please do. Uh, so um, you see, really, lots of lots of startups, uh, and uh, let's maybe start from the very beginning. The founders. Yeah. Some a bunch of guys come together and decide to conquer the world. Mm -hmm. huh? um, what, from your experience, what the, what are the first steps? for them to be successful in their mission. Hmm. All right. Uh, um, from your experience? Well, from my experience, I think what they have to think uh, of, first of all, what problem are they solving? And are they solving any problem? Because uh, quite, uh, I, I've seen quite many teams where they come 
and say, well, actually, this is a very unique project, and, uh, and I, we, nobody has done that, and, and uh, it's very interesting for me. Uh, and, and usually they don't check that there are like hundreds or hundred um, similar, similar um, companies in the world. Uh, they haven't bothered to, to check that. But I think the main, the main problem is it, it doesn't have to be interesting for you. It, you have to focus on, on the problem you're solving and to understand who has that problem. Is, does anyone have that problem? If, if, if there is a problem and, and someone has it, and you can solve it in an in a effective way, then, well, then the, it, it's a good idea. Then you can start working on, on your next steps, on your, uh, on your team. Mm -hmm. um, so I think team is also very, very important uh, for you. There is no one genius who would who do everything. He can code, he can manage, he can do marketing, he can do sales. I haven't met one. If, if there is one, maybe, uh, maybe I'll, I'll meet him one day. Um, and, then, and then, of course, you have to have a lot of courage and self-esteem and believe, believe in that and, and, and really be prepared to, to work hard day and night because everyone who is successful, uh, usually they don't take any holidays, they don't, um, they don't go anywhere, they just focus on that, work day and night on, 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 the, on, on their startup. Okay, um, but so provided we have a bunch of guys who who are really solving a painful problem, whatever size of the market. Huh? But uh, so from legal standpoint now, uh, how do you think they should proceed? And I'm referring to some agreement between the founders. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've, yeah, I have uh, participated in quite a few ventures and uh, it is a tricky situation. You don't want to go without anything if you overspend and uh, initially when you, your focus should be conquering the world, if you start thinking about negative scenarios and uh, uh, what's your uh, you know, divorce uh, uh, scenario is uh, it's it's you know it discourages it uh, takes time and, and uh, many many bad things uh, uh, take take your attention instead of, of um, implementing your mission. So, uh, what are your considerations uh, regarding the agreement between founders? Do they need it? Do they need it in written? In what form? Well, I like when, when the founders uh, come early to the lawyers. Earlier I said the lawyers are horrible yeah, uh, people, for but you, huh? no, no, not, I mean, you, I, I, you can't really charge them when, when they have nothing. Uh, so, but I'm, I'm, this is, this is a, a serious point that, that, that you're raising. Um, the, the founders, um, I think what they have to, and that's a, a difficult task, they, what they have to understand, um, they have to divide the, the future pie. So who is important, how much, and, uh, and do we, and, and there are different options. You can divide equally between each other. You can try estimate how, how important one's role is and uh, who, does anyone have to have majority or, or not? These are important questions. <laughs> So I think this is more important, the split and, and also um, the idea on, on, on the takeouts, on the salaries maybe, and I would suggest no salaries for no one at the very beginning unless we raise a, or you raise a fund. Um, but, um, and and the, the agreement that you refer to, the founders agreement, we lawyers call it shareholders agreement, I'm not a big fan of it. Um, I think it's a waste of money on lawyers because the, the, there is no typical shareholders agreement. Uh, these are very unique situations usually that you agree, and then you yet you, you so you spend a lot of on, on this unique uh, product on, 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 on lawyers, and it doesn't really get you there. I mean, if you want to implement that in the end, if, if there is a legal dispute, I don't think there is. Uh, it, it is very helpful because. Um, if, if you have a, a party which is not willing, 
to to hold up to the the, the agreement, it it will be painful and maybe not worth it going to you know to a court or or arbitration, whatever you agree there in in in, in the agreement. So I think. What, what it, so if there is an agreement, it should be short and maybe focus on those negative scenarios. What, what happens if one of us decides to leave? We have four founders, one of us decides to leave. So I think this for feature of your shares, uh, if you leave that and that sort of gentleman's agreement or written agreement would be okay. So it, it sort of disincentivizes you to leave and then and leave the team in the middle of, of, of the progress. That's, um, that's, that's, that's that's important, um, but um, but otherwise, I'm, I, I, I would say focus on on uh, on the product, on on the success, because if it's usually those uh, those disputes and uh, negative things, this, they arise when when your uh, startup is not successful. When it's successful, nobody wants to leave that, right? So so and and if it's not successful, then anyway, there's nothing to sort of divide. So just focus on your on your business and product. Okay, yeah, cool. Um, now let's talk about. Uh, uh, you've talked about the division of shares. Uh, uh, what's your take on uh, inclusion of uh, of employees of key employees uh, into the uh, division of, of uh, future profits, probably uh, uh, in the form of uh, uh, stock options. And what's the practice uh, here in Lithuania? Yes. Maybe just mm -hmm. a brief overview on that. Yes, uh, I think employees are important, key employees even more so. Um, so you have to incentivize them. The, the question is how to incentivize. And stock options is a very uh, well-known tool for that. Um, uh, everybody knows about those, uh, uh, especially from US practice. Uh, the problem is that they are not um, easily um, transferable to Lithuania. Um, if, you, if you Google some some forms, um, it doesn't it doesn't necessarily fit uh, Lithuanian law, and and there are some tax implications and and, and, and uh, legal implications, which um, uh, make make those stock stock options not not. Um, well, not preferable, I, I, I would say. So uh, I know that um, state institutions are working on, on um, changing that, amending the laws, and then improving that. But currently, uh, the situation is, is, is not is not very good um, for for granting the stock options um, to the employees. Having said that. Um, I think that some sort of agreement and in Incentives for for employees are, are super important, and uh, and and you have to you have to think of of that and and allow a certain amount, some ten percent minimum of your equity for key for key employees when when thinking about the startups and, and division of, of your pie of of equity. So you say uh, the stock options are not working here here in Lithuania. What is working? Mm -hmm. um, I, when I when I say that it's not working, people do that, uh, and and I would I would I would suggest maybe either doing uh, outright sale if if you can, maybe stock options with uh, longer than than three years period in order to avoid uh, social security taxes, um, or uh, if you have a a foreign entity like UK US corporation try and do that uh, stock option in the incentivization uh, in that in, in that company mm -hmm. so uh, another uh, interesting point is uh, jurisdiction and choice of uh, choice of jurisdiction uh, um, okay so we have the proverbial bunch of guys uh, who are starting there the magnificent uh, problem solving uh, startup um, and yeah they say yeah we're gonna Sell, uh, we're gonna attract uh, investment from, uh, uh, you know, the Silicon Valley fund or this London-based fund, and we're gonna found, we're gonna incorporate our startup in the UK, in the US, mm -hmm. at the very, as a very first step. Uh, what's your take on on this uh, choice of, mm -hmm. of jurisdiction uh, and incorporating not in Lithuania but but uh, mm -hmm. elsewhere? 
Well, I know uh, quite a few startups, Lithuanian startups, purely Lithuanian startups who have uh, been uh, set up in US or, or UK. Uh, if uh, if you have, especially if you have team members or your you know major clients, or that's that's fine. Um, for the majority of Lithuanian startups, uh, people who are from Lithuania, I think it's uh, it's uh, quite difficult. Especially if you think that if you're if you have set up in in UK or US, it will be easier to attract financing and in, in investments and, and and talk to venture capital funds. I don't buy that idea. I think the um, the right choice would be start where, whenever, wherever you feel comfortable. Um, maybe look into the talent pool, look into, I know, cost, uh, because establishing a company, running the company, accounting, lawyers, uh, auditors, uh, these are, these are uh, huge expenses at the very beginning and I wouldn't, and these are like triple, I know, in, in UK or US. So, so if only f because of the venture capital funds, I would say stay here, do that. You know your, I know friends, your cousin may be a lawyer or accountant or mama is a bookkeeper. Um, keep the costs low, focus on, on, uh, on the product. And if your product is good and if your uh, startup is successful, the venture capital funds will find you anywhere, even in Lithuania. And, uh, and the reason why I would set up it anywhere where you feel comfortable and don't go for like guessing, wild guessing where the investor, future investor will come from, because even if you are in UK and if your um, investment fund, venture capital fund, is in US. There are many instances where the US fund asks you to move your company from UK to US because it's more comfortable, more familiar for them, and vice versa. If, if you set up in US, but there's a UK venture capital fund, he will say, well, actually, I don't want US. Um, I, I, want, I want UK. And so instead of sort of creating an advantage by, by setting your shop in, in US in, outright. Uh, you, you, you just lost you know, a lot of costs and you still have to move it. So you didn't gain anything. You said the, the VCs would find you even in Lithuania. What's your take uh, on, the, on the perception of Lithuania by uh, different uh, funds, hmm. capitalists? I think it's, uh, it's improving and improving uh, pretty fast. Um, if, if you take 2008, we had, um, I don't know, one successful startup like Getjar. Mm, kind of Lithuanian. Kind of Lithuanian, well, but, but then again, Skype was also not Estonian or, or TransferWise is not Estonian as well. So, so but let's, let's leave it in Lithuania, or Lithuanian startup. So, um, uh, what was the question? <laughs> uh, the perception of these towards right. yes. uh, yeah. Lithuania. So, uh, so I think uh, the venture capital funds, uh, and you can see that from a login conference and uh, other conferences here, is increasingly fond of uh, Baltics and Lithuania. They do understand that there is a lot of talent and uh, there are a lot of uh, interesting startups. I know quite a few funds who are tracking the companies, attending it here, year to year, uh, following the progress of, of the startups that uh, were created, what, so they follow up next year, so what have you achieved? And I think it's, uh, uh, they see it as a, a, a hunting ground for them, because it's a bit unexplored still, not well known as, I don't know, um, Israel or Amsterdam or Berlin. And, and so the, one, the, the, the funds who are, who are more courageous, more uh, adventurous, I think they are, they are very much looking into the Baltics. And you have to bear in mind that around the world, the, I think the, the number of venture capital funds raised and the capital, dry powder, um, uninvested capital sitting in the venture capital funds, I think at the re record high. And so everybody is struggling with the problem where to put that money. And, and so it's okay if it's in Baltics, it's okay if it's in Lithuania, they will find you. And, and the competition among the venture capital funds is so intense now that uh, we have 
that they have special tools on on registering the the buzz, the noise in the internet, the, the trail that you leave, so that they could, if 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 there's a big buzz or or big growth, I know in your market traction, they will they will call you up and 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 they will notice definitely notice you, and and they will they will call you up and and we had the, the those issues here with the recent um, uh, successful Lithuanian startups, where where people after three years of uh, three months of uh, consecutive. Uh, Consecutive growth uh, every year, like 100, 200 percent every month. Sorry, they they got called up and then say, well, do you need any help? Maybe do you need money? We're here, we help you. Uh, so, so I think this is uh, this is not an issue. They will find you here. Okay, so the good news for uh, the startup community is that uh, you just have to do your work properly, and uh, and the capital will find you. Uh, but, uh, Especially Lithuanian capital, which is yeah. upcoming. Okay, uh, but then there's another curious uh, case uh, regarding jurisdiction. Uh, I know you've uh, I've read in the newspaper um, you've uh, structured a deal for uh, for one of the startups uh, involving investors from uh, five different jurisdictions. Mm -hmm. So what what it is to to work out uh, such such a deal? Because the company can be incorporated in one jurisdiction only, and and you know if if five different investors are pulling uh, pulling to their side, uh, what's your maybe what's your role as a lawyer here, mm -hmm. uh, being on the side of a startup who mm -hmm. hired you, and and what what are the peculiarities of such a deal? Um, yes. Well, these are usually the, the I know round A or, or bridge round or, or uh, later rounds involve uh, quite many parties. Uh, if you start up, if you start as a, as a startup with just you founders, uh, four or five founders, and then you have the seed uh, investor uh, or, or business angels, so you have already like I know four founders, let's say, and another two business angels. Then you get to the seed round and, and get some institutional investors. So we have already like seven, if my mathematics is okay. Um, and then and then you sort of get to the round A or, or and and then and usually it involves one lead investor, but not necessarily one. It might be two, three, four, five additional investors who are piggybacking the lead uh, lead investor. So we have like I know 10, 12 people parties involved there, some of them sophisticated, some of them less sophisticated, with their interests, with their uh, imagination or uh, uh, with their ideas how it should be done. And that's quite a, a, a tricky thing for, uh, for, a, um, for a startup and founders to, to, to manage, um, because you constantly get obstacles that you have to overcome. Um, someone that can't invest from, I know, Cayman Islands uh, into, I know, US, so, so you have to change that. Someone, someone doesn't, doesn't want to invest in, in the US because he's only allowed to invest in U, UK, otherwise he doesn't get tax incenti incentives and, and, and so on. So, so this is, this is quite, uh, quite difficult. Then, then when it, uh, when it gets to, to the actual documents, you, you, usually the lead investor decides quite a lot of things, or most of the things. So he chooses uh, which law will govern the documents, uh, investment documents, and by that you, you, know, um, you know what other steps or additional documents will be needed according to that jurisdiction. And uh, and then you have to well collect uh, collect um, different documents from various investors, consents, and uh, so it's it's a complex uh, project. And I think what what most of the founders need is uh, is someone to sort of coordinate that and push it forward because. It's very easy for a founder, I mean, for a lawyer, it's quite difficult to understand and, and, and manage all those requests and, and to do that. But for a founder who is, uh, who is not a lawyer, it's even more complicated to, to, to sort of understand. So is that, is that what was proposed by one investor, is that acceptable to me or not acceptable? Is, uh, and, and if it's that acceptable to me, would that be acceptable to others? And so you are constantly managing and coordinating things and, and changes between 10, 12 parties. And that's why the investment process is, is, uh, takes so long. And, and I've heard many founders saying, well, 
uh, I haven't imagined that, that it will be so long. I thought it's like what? It's, it's just one agreement. And, and it's not up to lawyers. It, it, lawyers don't do that on purpose uh, to, to, to complicate that. Uh, some do, but um, we don't. <laughs> the bad uh, ones, yeah. Yeah, the bad ones. <laughs> But um, so I think you have to have uh, like really uh, someone who pushes uh, pushes it forward, and and there are moments where you really want to like drop everything. I don't want any money. I just forget that. I'll, I'll do do that. But um, so someone someone has to push push that forward. So what was the shortest and the longest uh, agreement negotiation uh, terms that you have participated in? Shortest. Three months. Three months. Yeah. Longest, like, twelve months. Okay. The the problem is also that with um, I mean w w with startups um, and startup is defined by high growth and 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 constant change. So th the problem is that the startup grows so fast that uh, that sometimes you negotiate the term or you you're negotiating the term sheet and during that time the valuation changes uh, so much that you have to renegotiate or start from scratch the, the term sheet negotiation or at least the valuation part um, and and we had uh, such instances quite quite many times and and then when you when you um, negotiate the second term sheet you suddenly have a, a buyer who, who wants to buy it outright and so you don't need any term sheet at all already so it's um, it, it it happens so you have to and also why on the other hand on the other hand I think it's very important to, to manage it quickly because all those negotiations and, and try to push forward and negotiate fast because all those negotiations take time away from your core purpose, from your core thing, mm -hmm. product development and, and sales. So, so it's very time consuming, so you have to really focus and try to push, push forward. And, and so therefore, in your team, you have to have someone who is really a pusher. Who's, and, and all, all most successful teams I've seen, why they did that, or why are they where, where they are now, successful? Because there is one guy who just cuts through the crap and says, okay, stop. I don't care what's that. Let's let's move forward. And I and and he shuts the lawyers. He shuts the investors. He says, "Come on, if you don't want to do that deal, don't do that. Let's go. Let's go without you." Mm -hmm. And that's how you have to how to how, how you have to push forward if you want to close the deal. All right. So before we move uh, a bit more into into the uh, investment. Uh, uh, part. Um, so, what uh, when you see a team, uh, our proverbial uh, bunch of guys uh, conquering the world, uh, what cues do you take? Uh, what's important for you deciding or just mentally projecting the future? You know, because you've seen quite a lot of teams. Some are successful, some are don't. One of the features is the uh, cut the crab guy and and pusher. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, what wh what other cues inform you that that this team might do well? Uh, I think the combination of things I've said before. I think this leader, who who is a doer and and doesn't hesitate and doesn't oh uh, if I go there. I mean, when you're doing a startup, every every step you take, you're it might be wrong and 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 there there is no step where you do it without any risk there's always a risk and lots of risk involved so so if you wait for a moment where there is no risk and only then take decision i think you you won't get anywhere so so therefore you have to take the risks and and and, and guess because you nobody knows what will be in the future so you just guess follow your gut feeling and just guess and, and do what you think is right and, and and go forward so that's that's one thing so this guy is important um and um then uh, what i said if i think the product itself and and this product itself also um, coupled with the market traction so that the growth that you experience it's not in your mind not the projection that i think that uh, my i know customers or, or time spent or or clicks uh, will increase uh, at that rate but the real market traction if if that's at the very beginning very very high and then it usually slows down uh, later on 
I think these three things would be so the, the good guy in the team, a very good product which gets market traction. I think these are these are most important things. Okay, so we have them in place, mm -hmm. and uh, a VC is knocking on our door, or maybe mm -hmm. we found him in uh, I don't know a login, login conference, for mm -hmm. example. Um, so, what would be your advice, do's and don'ts, uh, for, a, for a startup guy? How to get the best value uh, for the least uh, <laughs> equity? Mm -hmm. um, well, if, if you have a chance, I think you, you have to look at, at various, uh, and I think all the startups uh, what they do is, is talk to various uh, VC teams and and try to extract uh, well best term sheet um, and and so I think that that would be important not jump at the first term sheet you you have on the other hand of course if you have a term sheet this is usually a limited um, lifespan and it doesn't mean that you can go shopping around for for quite some time and some term sheets if you sign usually usually mean that you can't shop uh, uh, for a certain period of time so the exclusivity period so so when you when you are looking for a term sheet before you sign you have you you should you should sort of shop a bit um, and then take the the best maybe not only um, well, maybe another well, I having said that I would I would say what you have to look at is not only your valuation number that you get in your term sheet, meaning that with the, for the um, uh, same amount you, you, you give up um, least of, uh, of your equity, but, uh, but also for your strategic fit with that uh, VC, because I think even more important than, than, than your valuation is, is uh, have uh, is, is that VC fund, uh, do they have experience? Uh, maybe uh, do they have experience in your product? If, if you're a SaaS, software as a service, uh, or, or if you're a marketplace, there are different tactics, different, uh, <coughs> different things to, to consider. So you have to, you have to, have, you have to go to the ones who, who know that. And, and there are now, uh, there are so many venture capital funds so that they have to, really specialize in order to be successful and, and provide value to you. So I think this network and experience element is, um, I would say, equally important as, uh, as the valuation. And, and also, if you have a chance to get uh, someone uh, who's really, really famous in that sphere, I wouldn't hesitate to even give out the shares for free. I know if you have a Richard Branson who, or Peter Thiel or Elon Musk who, uh, who would be considering your, your poor or rich startup, uh, I'd, be, I'd gladly give, give up uh, one or two or I know how many shares just to have them on board because that would open the door to so many other investors. Because investors are, uh, they, they follow, there's a herd mentality among the investors. If, if there's Richard Branson there, everyone says, okay, so I, I know that he did his due diligence, so I'm just following him and I'll, <laughs> I'll invest whatever, at whatever valuation. Okay, okay, yeah, so that, uh, uh, what else could increase uh, uh, our startup's valuation? Getting big names uh, and um, the uh, growth rate. Growth rate. Growth rate of your whatever measure you mm -hmm. have, uh, whatever suits you best. I think this growth rate is the key in, in valuation. Not your positive cash flow. Actually, no ca positive cash flow is important at, uh, in my opinion, uh, uh, in the valuation of a startup. Because it's, we're, we're talking more on the, of, the, of the burning rate than, than the positive cash flow. And if you're in the positive cash flow territory, that means that you're nearing to the standard valuation methods, um, which mm -hmm. is EBITDA multiples, yeah. which we don't want to get to if we want to get a good valuation. So growth rate is uh, key from the very beginning. And okay. uh, do you have any funny stories how founders uh, screwed up the investment process? <laughs> Come on, <laughs> don't mention the names. <laughs> Bring some. <laughs> Well, uh, to, to be honest, I'm, I'm not trying to hide anything, but I think 
every every in in uh, every founder or every company startup that we worked with uh, were, were 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 quite successful, uh, and and I, I don't remember stories. I think the ones who are very greed, maybe yes, we uh, there there is one one small pattern. The 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 startups who were quite greedy at the beginning and very. Um, well, saving their equity and not willing to, to share it with uh, with venture capital uh, funds uh, usually end up with 100% of nothing in the in the end. Okay, so sharing is uh, caring, caring and getting uh, <laughs> and forward, getting forward. Yeah. All right. Uh, so um, uh, now uh, moving moving on, uh, you know. Uh, most of the startups, uh, some people uh, think uh, about solving problems. Many people, and I think too many people, think about earning money and uh, uh, they start about thinking about exit uh, or IPO or selling the whole equity to, to someone, to big investor, to uh, strategic investor, uh, anybody who takes it. Uh, too early, I think, uh, and, and people just focus on money too much uh, for the most part what I've, mm -hmm. what I've seen um, so what what's your take when do you think it's okay to start thinking about uh, about the exit mm -hmm. um, I would say um, focus on product um, <laughs> and growth mm -hmm. I would reiterate growth Everything else will follow. You'll find you'll find a way if you have good product that grows, uh, or your your product or, or well grows a lot. You'll you'll find a way. Uh, from the investors' point of view, from the venture capital funds' point of view, I think they think of the exit before the investment. So they kind of do a work for you uh, as a startup, as a founder. Um, because if they believe in you and they invest in you, this means they have a sort of an exit strategy. Because most of the venture capital funds, the, their lifetime is limited. It's usually 10 years, so they have five years to invest and then another five years to exit. And so that's uh, during those five, I know, seven years, the typical holding period of a venture capital fund, they have to create value and, and start exiting. So they will think um, for you about that and, and work with you on the best exit strategies at the trade sale to another strategic fund or or, um, or secondary sale to another uh, financial institution or uh, or I know IPO uh, or, or other um, exit channels or bankruptcy. <laughs> uh, well, but uh, so I think. It's rather a job for for um, for investor. And on the other hand, when you have the serious in investors, uh, first institutional investors, I think that would be the high time to start thinking of the exit with and sitting down with the, with the venture capital fund and discussing what are their expectations, what what they think would would be best, and then maybe thinking. Before that, I think you just focus on your growth and product. Okay, so uh, uh, I've seen some guys and uh, pretty successful uh, guys uh, who are quite, quite uh, um, I would say, investment savvy, you know, and, and they're, they're planning, okay, so I'm getting, I'm aiming uh, Series A uh, uh, this much million, then probably bridge, blah, 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 and, and they're like, uh, Really planning for 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 growth uh, from from the beginning. Uh. It's it's a good attitude. I think this is um, this is uh, well savvy uh, uh, founders and, and experienced founders uh, how how they follow because uh, the truth is uh, these are different strategies. If if you are aiming for an IPO and you want to be the next unicorn, uh, you have to do completely different things. Uh, uh, as as uh, you would do if you if you if you want to grow your company I don't know to 20 30 40 millions and then sell it to I don't know Google or, or Yahoo or, or not <laughs> Yahoo sorry <laughs> the Facebook and um, or, so I think these these are different strategies and and uh, and so the, it's it's right it's the right thing to to think about this um, 
coupled with uh, your projections on, on, on cash flow, theoretical um, um, theoretical projections on, 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 on valuations and, and sort of putting the cap table and, and knowing how, how, with how much equity you will end up after you know third or fourth round. That's, uh, that, is, that is important. You have to uh, do that calculation. Even do you think uh, do you think there is uh, some uh, uh, objective criteria to differentiate uh, uh, in a situation? I think uh, crazy people who found uh, who who do startups uh, they're optimists and and uh, they really think that yeah I'm gonna conquer the world and mine my enterprise is gonna be another unicorn and uh, I'm gonna rock the world and. Uh, uh, but then, is there a differentiator that you could see, maybe not from the inside, but uh, but uh, as a as a professional who who looks from the outside of, of the companies, uh, uh, unicorns and then 20, 40 million uh, companies. Do do you see? Uh, well, what I would say, uh, there are certain features that um, a founder has to have. Um, he has to really be daring and 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 i know courageous i mean you you have to you have to understand that especially in this venture capital world with um, uh, jargon and 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 their own rules um, you can't you can't you can't be as a as a normal investor who thinks in terms of return uh, or of or there's a, a benjamin graham book from um, 1929 where he teaches um, what who is an intelligent investor and he actually coined the phrase what is investing and investing is not betting and investing is not expecting um, unreasonable returns uh, so in, investing is in his terms is more about bonds and and or, or uh, stocks which re, uh, pay dividends and that, that's the typical investment and so very good book I recommend to, to read that but venture capital is nothing about it. Uh, there is nothing about intelligent investor in, uh, in, in venture capital world. Because the founder, he has to have a certain mentality uh, because you are talking about burning rates. You are, you, you've raised your, I know, uh, 200,000 or a million or two million euros as a, as a, and you have to burn those money as fast as you can. Uh, and in order to, gain growth and growth is the main thing and basically you are running through or, or burning through that money pile of money as fast as you can without having secured the next round of, of it so basically you feel like you're uh, driving i know a ferrari towards the wall and 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 instead of slowing down you're accelerating and hoping that this wall uh, miraculously will, will just disappear and you will raise, and, and that's a, a, a feeling that, that not everybody can deal with. And, uh, and so there, there is this, this feature of this brave, I, I would say even, uh, well, ad adventurous uh, to the level of um, schizophrenic maybe uh, okay. it's uh, so you, you have to be you have to be ready to, to, to deal with that with this uncertainty and be be okay with that uh, uncertainty okay yeah so thank you for this uh, wonderful review uh, now maybe we could uh, just uh, from from what you see in in, in our ecosystem uh, what's coming up for for Lithuania in uh, startup world? Uh, I think the Lithuania will be, uh, to quote our uh, Minister of Economy, a paradise for startups uh, soon. Um, uh, but in, in, in reality, we are uh, we are uh, we are going that um, that way. Um, there is a big uh, effort from uh, Startup Lithuania, Enterprise Lithuania, to improve the ecosystem uh, in well from leg legislative uh, point of view, but also. Um, if you are a startup, you are in a, in a, in a, in a, or if you have an idea and um, it takes time, some six, uh, 12 months to, to realize, to work on it, I think this is the perfect time now to, to really uh, start working on that idea because 
in 12 months time uh, there will be so much money here in Lithuania we have some six nine um, new Lithuanian funds coming there will be 22 funds in Baltics new funds Estonia Latvia Lithuania 22 new funds uh, with loads of capital um, there is an estimate that some 500 million euros will be dedicated to venture capital funds in the Baltics. Some 100 to 200 million in Lithuania. So I know that uh, for venture capital funds it's not a, a funny situation. They have to really deliver returns. They have to find whom to invest into. Uh, that will be a, a big problem for them. But for you, for the founders, it's a paradise uh, because um, if you have a decent idea, if you have a team, if even, and and if you have, I know, a track record of some sorts, you're you're well positioned to to apply. So work on your ideas, prepare the pitches, and uh, and and be courageous. Contact the, the the funds. Even you can you, you can start working with the funds even now. Start con contacting them, getting their views. Um, so I think this, uh, this will be a, a, a good time for our ecosystem and especially for the entrepreneurs. We'll see what will be the returns of this vintage in 10 years' time, but, um, but for the startupers and for, for founders and startups, it will be a good year. Okay, thank you, Linus. Uh, that's all from me. And uh, uh, now it's uh, time for your questions. If you're planning your way to this uh, startup heaven we're uh, headed to, uh, if you have any uh, legal questions, uh, uh, please uh, please ask Linus. Uh, do not ask questions regarding your granny's heritage or something. Uh, do not try to solve your uh, specific problems here. But if you have some some more uh, some more general questions, uh, now is the time. And I see a hand over there. Then you, yeah, please. Uh, uh, suppose uh, these guys. Uh, want to create a startup, uh, they are going, they want to attract some capital and they uh, want to register some legal entity. Mm -hmm. So uh, what's the best way? I mean, uh, it's supposed to be an UAB, right? But uh, I don't know, how many act actions should we make? How comes mm -hmm. everything? Okay. okay, so I would, I, well, if, if we're talking about Lithuanian jurisdiction, I would uh, recommend uh, UAB outright, uh, not an MB, not an individual entity, uh, not other forms of, of, of it. Um, and and it, actually, it's, uh, it's not that hard to, 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 to establish it, especially, I mean, you can do it on, online even. Uh, that's what um, Center of Registers uh, or Register of Enterprises says. So uh, if, if you're okay with the typical bylaws that, that are there provided, you, you sign up. Um, I think you're, um, you can do it even online. And, um, but I think um, the problem starts then. <laughs> Well, you, if you have uh, set up your UAB, then you have to have uh, a, a general manager and pay salary to him. Um, then you have to have an accountant uh, who has to well, do your books or cook your books. And, <laughs> and, uh, but uh, uh, when you re register, I think you have to set up the amount of shares that you issue or no. Yes, well, definitely you have to have. Uh, we have a 2,500 euros minimum capital. That's for now. There are changes upcoming to decrease that to one euro. Hopefully that will pass, but uh, it's, not yet, uh, it's not here yet. Uh, so 2,500 euros, you have to um, form a minimum state, uh, well, authorized capital of the company. And but, uh, this capital, how many how many shares would you recommend dividing it into? If you if you're in, if you're uh, intending to have employees and uh, and and grant stock options and or um, come with um, uh, with investor, I would recommend uh, to to split into many shares, not like. I know 250 or 25 shares, um, 100 uh, euros each, or so. I, I would recommend like I know 10,000 or, or 100,000 shares divided, um, uh, or to divide it in, 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 in the, so that you could grant uh, more shares or, or or split your 
capital into smaller, know, pieces. smaller, smaller pieces and also work on, you know, uh, I know 2%, 2.75% uh, 2 or so shares um, of, of a capital. But are these shares, they stay in the company or they are divided between the founders? Well, usually well, the, those shares have to be divided by the founders. The company can own only up to 10% of, of its shares. So it's usually the founders that uh, who hold the, the, the shares. So later on we just sell our shares to investors? Usually it's not that you sell the shares. Usually the, the company increases the, its capital and so that the funds that are flowing from venture capital fund are not going to you directly, so it's not a bonanza and, and your holiday now, but it's actually work starts and the, mon the company gets the money and you get to spend those money that came to company uh, according to the plan and, and um, well, program that you worked with the investor. So we issue more shares, like... Uh, yes, uh, correct. Proportionally, right? Correct. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, thank you for an interesting discussion. Uh, I've got a question. Recently, I got an investment from a seed fund mm -hmm. for some super small amount of mm -hmm. shares, and we are looking, obviously, for another. It's called probably a round, mm -hmm. right? From your experience, what's the amount of shares usually usually they look for? I mean, what's the buy? I w the, the round A um, investment usually involves 10 to 20 percent shares, rather 10 than 20. Mm -hmm. Depends, depends on, of course on, on, the, on the amount, on the, well, your valuation basically. Um, but I would say normal funds uh, are, are okay with some 10, 20 percent of the shares. Mm -hmm. Do you expect cash payments for your services to startups or do you work on a sweat for equity basis? <laughs> sweat for equity, delayed, uh, delayed uh, or, or postponed uh, payments. Uh, when, when you f fundraise, that's, uh, that's acceptable uh, <laughs> as well. <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, Mitchell. There was a hand back there. Yeah. Yes. Um, got a scenario for you. So, um, Say uh, I've got a startup and I uh, have my own strategy for selling the product, but I also want somebody to get onto my team. But how do I know how much equity should I give them to motivate them if they give me no returns? Is there any legal practice on somehow setting up a deal that you, as a uh, somebody who comes in, will get this and that, provided your strategy works better than mine? Because if I sell more by myself, why would I pay? Mm -hmm. Performance-based uh, stock options? Yes, absolutely. I mean, um, the, the stock options don't have to be um, don't have to be fixed uh, in, 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 I don't know, time only. I mean, there, there are quite a few variables that you can agree on with, with any employee or, or your partner or, or, or um, um, because, I mean, w and the variables usually are, you can agree on the term, like in, ten, in two years' time you get uh, X amount. You can agree on the amount, that X, uh, but you can also agree on the, on the performance base or uh, on the ifs. If we fundraise, then you get something, or if you sell as much, then you get something. So equally, you could agree that uh, if your strategy is, works, as you said, then, then you get uh, an X amount of of percentage and that's that's totally because the stock option uh, there is no standard for that uh, I mean it's the agreement between you your personal agreement with the guy who whom you onboarding so right. to speak. So, um, but is there um, but is there a way in say the Lithuanian legal system to uh, say unpaid uh, how, how would you call it like I don't know uh, in Lithuanian you would say the net moketo but net um, moketo um, unpaid shares. Oh, unpaid, unpaid. Uh, you mean restricted shares or unpaid right, shares? Right or when you don't pay uh, for the shares. You, uh, yeah, you get your uh, you get your um, shares when you pay for it. Uh -huh. But you uh, so like if you don't perform, you you're not given a chance to pay for it, so you won't get it. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so I, I believe you, you, you're talking about the restricted shares. So you can structure, um, well, it's not technically a stock option. Uh, usually if, if, you, if you grant the shares and, and these are, are not paid, so you have to have already the shares. With a stock option, usually, if you, in Lithuania at least, there is no, um, no issued shares at that moment when you, when you sign the stock option agreement. But you can, do, you can structure that like, like what you said, um, that you sort of give the shares um, uh, which which are maybe unpaid. I mean, technically, it, it, it it's it's um, it's it's quite difficult with um, with um, uh, the structure. Right. If you give them up, they don't perform. They'll still have it. They still have it, and they can pay it, and then they sort of paid for the shares and, and, and have it, even even if you want to structure it in the way that uh, so you don't allow to pay them. But in the worst case scenario, they can pay for those shares and they still own it. So uh, so I think you. But but there are no, um, agreement. You can you can agree on buyback. You can agree on the pledge of the shares, so that you have security uh, that that if if they don't perform, that you get your shares back. Is it easier to get your shares back or not? To give them? No, I don't think it's easier to get your shares back. It's better not to give them. <laughs> so better stick with stock option. All right. So there was a question here. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm not really sure if this question is of your field, but um, heritage. Um, uh, so if the startup has um, only an idea. They don't have a pro the tangible product yet. Yeah. Um, they don't regenerate the finances yet. Um, but they're looking for, you know, for, 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 for in an investment. How should they approach um, like capital funds or um, an individual investor? Because I've heard from others' experiences that they sometimes they, they give away their idea and then all of a sudden the, the venture capitalists, they have loads of money and they just, you know, they try the idea and that's it, the, the end of the startup. Okay. Yes, well, the, there are um, companies who specialize in that, like Rocket Internet, uh, who, who just, what, what they do, it's a listed German company, uh, they do just copycats, right? But. Uh, but uh, usually uh, the venture capital funds and guys who, who focus on, on pre-seed in your case, uh, the, the, they, they are not really eager into, uh, into doing the work themselves. That's why they need you. That's why they give you the majority of shares. So you would be doing the work for them. They just give the money and just sit back usually. So, so the real venture capital funds, they, they are not they're, they're not hard-working guys, um, well, in, <laughs> um, they, so they would not, they would not steal and, and, uh, your, your idea. Um, I, I, wouldn't be, I wouldn't be worried with, uh, with the reputable um, seed, seed funds and, and pre-seed funds. And, and we have, of the, I mean, here in, in Baltics or Lithuania, we have um, such funds in, in Practica Capital anytime or, or Karma Ventures uh, anytime. I think they would be they would be very, uh, very decent in, 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 in how they handle. But also what I would say, um, what you would need is maybe um, accelerator uh, at the very beginning, who, where, where they would work uh, and formulate your pitch. They would help you build the, the team, uh, focus on the product first and sort of maybe pre-test it on, on the, some beta version maybe to, to feel the market traction. I think this might be another avenue that, that you might try and, and then the, those accelerators would, would be taking care of that the idea wouldn't be stolen or, or, um, or, and, and would know which uh, funds to talk to. You know. okay. Thank you. All right, any more questions? Yes, please. So typically when we talk about startup investment, we talk about two terms like equity dilution and capital raise. That's like two terms that are negotiated on. What are other terms that we can use to negotiate on? How important are liquidity clauses? decision-making power, mm -hmm. what, what are the tools that we can use to pump up yes. well, the, the value? You've, um, you've listed quite uh, a few um, important, other important terms. So term, um, um, 
Uh, how, how should I mean? Uh, th there are there are standard uh, clauses, uh, liquidity preference, uh, liquidation preference, um, um, down round uh, with it, uh, put option in case of um, of, uh, of well uh, bad outcome uh, if if uh, if it's not successful. Um, voting rights, definitely. No no capital provider wants you to spend that money on you know your yacht or, or, or car so there will be definitely restrictions on where where do you spend that money and and, and uh, so voting rights are are important um, so and and um, I would say uh, I would say I would add this um, in Lithuania at least uh, we have um, we have had um, um, only a few uh, real market players here who formed uh, market standards uh, who are not as favorable uh, to, to founders uh, as somewhere else but there are more uh, players coming into the market and we have new new players already some two um, at least two funds that are functioning already and like I said another uh, maybe well four six uh, funds who will be coming and I expect the term sheets to be more uh, founders friendly with less um, less clauses which, um, which 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 restrict the founders. Can I have a quick follow up question on this? Sure. So uh, for Lithuania it's more or less clear and, and you know, there are legal firms here that are startup friendly. But if you raise capitals with some, some capital fund abroad would you recommend to go for a legal firm there? Definitely, definitely. And um, the the firms that um, that are really specialized in that, and I would suggest um, a law firm where you don't have to explain what's liquidation preference, and and, and so that people who, who know that and deal it on a daily ba deal with it on a daily daily basis. Um, the, the the really the, the ones who are focused on, on on startups, they are also happy to work, and and I've experienced that myself with uh, quite a few Lithuanian firms who who want to to make a flip, sort of to move their company from Lithuania to UK or US. They are happy to. To, to, to work also on a deferred fee basis, so main, meaning that whenever you fundraise only then you have to pay. And, uh, and um, so they're, they're uh, user friendly, they, they have, you know, they even give you, you know, conference rooms for free and, and maybe even invest into your company as well or help you with, uh, with investors. So, so the, the ones who, who work with startups usually are very, very flexible and, uh, and, and know that they are dealing not with some rich um, multi-billion um, dollar companies. Cool. Thank you. All right. Uh, anyone uh, a final question? Uh, no. So uh, we're, not, we're gonna conclude on that. I'm just gonna remind you that uh, we're gonna have uh, all those who have registered for the event, we're gonna have a lottery and uh, the lucky winner will have a one-hour consultation with Lina Savalauskas. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Another th short announcement. Uh, uh, our uh, next uh, uh, Startup Grind event uh, is scheduled already next week. And uh, we're going to have a uh, uh, discussion with uh, one of the most senior uh, people at uh, Wix. And we're going to talk about uh, data-driven decisions. It's going to be very, very interesting, I promise you. And uh, regarding tonight, I want to thank uh, our partners. Uh, that's going to be Shviturys, uh, Jurgis Drakonas, uh, Jobrelai, Go Vilnius, Vagatu Art Factory, Krabas Irko, and uh, Vilnius Tech Park. <laughs> so thank you all and please uh, enjoy the evening together.